I'm here in South Nashville today with Juanita Strickert, and Juanita has 28 theme gardens. A lot of them feature herbs, but there's a lot of them that have other things that we find interesting as well. Juanita, help us learn a bit about what we're going to do here today and where are we standing right now? We're at the Celtic Garden. Uh, when I say Celtic Garden, I'm referring to uh, what we today call Great Britain, uh, England, Ireland, Wales, and Scotland. And uh, we're, in we're inhabited by the Celtic peoples who made two migratory waves across Europe in about 1000 BC and 500 BC. They were not gardeners, they were a rather violent, warlike people. Uh, and they would go out into the wild and gather those plants that they needed for their own purposes. Show us some of these plants here. All right, this is the uh, wild columbine, which grew all over Europe, very beautiful plant. And uh, uh, it inspired some of the uh, poetry that their bards wrote and so forth. Here you see a pool of lustral water surrounded by the Irish moss. And uh, uh, they used their uh, holy vervain, uh -huh. this plant, uh, in their lustral waters for rites of purification and um, uh, various other ceremonial uh, events. What else do we have in here? Uh, here we have uh, 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 meadow sweet, uh, which uh, according to um, uh, their Celtic uh, uh, mythology was used in the creation of a woman. Really? It's a beautiful fern-like foliage mm -hmm. that you see here. Mm -hmm. Here is a wild columbine in mm -hmm. bloom. And I see we have poppies. Yes, indeed. And we have, um, uh, over here, we'd like to, to mention, talk about this plant for a little bit. This is the woad. I'm sorry, woad? Wo woad, woad. Okay. yes. Uh -huh. Which um, Julius Caesar wrote about in the Gallic Wars. He wrote about the fact that the uh, ancient uh, Scots would paint their faces uh, and bodies with uh, a blue dye that they obtained from this plant and then go out into battle. Uh, and um, uh, those of you who saw the movie uh, Braveheart may mm -hmm, have, have mm -hmm. seen faces painted blue. Well, this is what the Scots did, and this was that plant which they, they grew uh, for their warlike purposes. What else do you have here? Uh, this is the um, uh, red valerian, mm -hmm. which, which just grew out and, and helped to, uh, to beautify part of the, uh, uh, of the landscape that was there. Mm -hmm. um, here we have some uh, of the uh, English mint. Okay. Uh, which uh, they used for seasoning and, uh, and so forth. This is the uh, digitalis, or foxglove, mm -hmm. as it's also called, which uh, grew wild. And again, uh, they, they wrote about the red of the foxglove being well, like a woman's cheek, being like the, the red mm -hmm. of the foxglove, mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. same color. Mm -hmm. So the bards used it uh, in their poetry. What is, what is the face on the tree there in amongst the ivy that I see? The, uh, the Celts were an animistic society. This means they thought that every tree, every cloud, every rock, every stream had a spirit of its own. And this was part of their way of life and their way of thinking. And that is the spirit of that tree. Well, that's very interesting. <laughs> Thank you. Here we come to um, an area that has oxlip, cowslip, and the uh, primula, the mm -hmm. um, uh, primrose. Primrose, mm -hmm. right. And uh, they grew wild over, over all of England there, as well as the other, other islands. Well, this has been great. Let's take a walk up here and see what else we've got. Okay, very good. Juanita, tell us about that petite little rose over there. Isn't it beautiful? It is. Uh, it is. It is just a delight. It's <clears throat> the uh, Scots rose, and it is called uh, petite pink uh, rose. And like all the uh, old herbal rose that blooms only once a year, so this is its time to shine. Uh -huh. At the foot of the rose uh, is the um, uh, uh, meadow sweet, which was used uh, uh, for brides when, when they married. On the other side of the rose is the Scots sisal, and I'll have to tell you a, a, uh, a, an interesting story about how that came to be the national emblem of Scotland. Um, uh, after the Romans pulled out of, um, of uh, uh, ancient Britain, of course, the other surrounding countries all invaded and so forth. And in 787, the Danes invaded Scotland. And they had found the Scots army and uh, were camped nearby, and they were going to attack at night and destroy the army. Well, of course, the Danish soldiers, as many soldiers in those days, were barefoot, and they did not know that there was a field of these thistles <laughs> between their encampment and the uh, um, uh, Scots encampment. And of course, as they uh, proceeded to attack, their cries of pain as they- They got more than they bargained for. <laughs> in the thistles, awakened the Danes who 
uh, pursued and uh, slaughtered them. And because the thistle had saved them, it was made the national emblem of Scotland. Well, that's great. I think we're going to visit one of your other theme gardens in just oh, a minute. All and right. Is that the magical or? Yes, herbs that have special powers, magical powers. Well, let's go check that out. Okay, very good. Juanita, it seems though there's three theme gardens here. Let's walk along and you can tell me what's, what these theme gardens are called. All right, this is the Bain Garden. Bain was an old Anglo-Saxon word that meant hurtful or harmful. So these are all toxic herbs. Okay. The one in bloom in the back is, for example, the louse bane flea bane and so forth. Okay, in the middle garden here? This one is the wart garden, another old Anglo-Saxon word which originally meant um, root, then came to mean plant, then those plants which today we say have uh, herbal qualities and all their common names end with the word wart, such as woolly wound wart, brown wart, black wart. And the third garden here? The third garden is, uh, these are herbs that have special powers, sort of magical powers. Ooh, let's stop a minute and talk about this. Okay, candy. very good. Um, uh, this is often called money plant or lunaria mm -hmm. uh, because the seed pods look like a moon mm -hmm. and it was used in the treatment of, of um, mental disease. So these pods are new here and as they mature on the plant they'll get a little sleeve on it and then right, that right. falls down and it's white. Right, okay. it's very silvery. Okay. This is a hellebore which mm -hmm. is thought to have a magical powers for curing uh, a madness. And we got some fennel, some bronze fennel. We have bronze fennel, which was used by witches. They were afraid of the common fennel, especially when it bloomed because of the yellow flowers. Really? But, but this one was their color. The dark color was their was their color, so they liked it. Okay. What else we have? We have the uh, valerian okay. the, uh, there, and um, you have angelica. It, uh, angelica, right? And it was thought to be able to cure the plague or prevent the plague. A really? very very powerful herb that could prevent the plague. And you'll see fern there. Uh -huh. Shakespeare says, we walk invisible. We are in receipt of fern seed. They thought that the spores of the fern would make them invisible. Okay. And uh, we have on, on the uh, bird feeder, growing on the roof of that, uh, the uh, Sempervivum, we call it hen and chicks. Okay. And uh, it was used to plant it on the roof of their homes to keep out uh, thunder and lightning and I evil spirits. I would have spirits. never guessed that that, that evil had spirits. that lore. Yes. The hazel shrub is, is at the end of the garden. It was thought to keep away the uh, evil spirits. Uh -huh. Well, this has been wonderful, Juanita. Thank you so much. I've learned so much. You not only do you have wonderful herb gardens, but you have fantastic stories to learn. Oh, you have, you're you. just a bustle of knowledge, as oh. I like to say. Thank well, you very much. Certainly. I've enjoyed myself. Thank you. If you like gardening, you'll want to subscribe to this channel. We showcase gardeners, plants, and the joy that growing can bring.